Hello, Sarah from Ida. Thank you so much for joining me on the Mary Jess Meets podcast. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. And honestly, so excited to be talking to you because I've spoken to the other three girls from Ida and I've been so looking forward to getting you in the diary because I couldn't wait to talk to you. All the girls, obviously, they're so lovely. You all speak so highly of each other and I couldn't wait to chat to you. So thank you so much for coming on and agreeing to share your time with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you talk to singers because we always end up singing a bit of a sentence. <laughs> I, know. I can't help it. People give out to me for it all the time and I'm like, I, I don't notice I'm doing it until someone tells me I've done it. So then I'm like, oh, so. <laughs> I know, but I love it. It makes me feel like I'm in good company because I do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it's practice. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's additional practice throughout your day. Yeah, exactly. just being professional. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I feel like the best place to start is always really at the beginning, isn't it? So I'd like to ask you how you got into singing. How did you know that that was something that you loved and was a passion of yours? Well, I don't know to start with. I loved music from a, like a tiny, tiny, tiny one. And I remember being obsessed. I must have been small because I remember having my face up against the TV when I was very small with Sinead O'Connor's Nothing Compares, obsessed and I used to watch it on repeat. <laughs> so I was probably, God, I must've been about four. I don't know what year that came out, but I'm an 86 baby. So I don't know, maybe 90. Um, but I was obsessed with that song and I used to sing along to that. But then it was like Celine Dion, any of the big singers, I used to belt out and annoy my mother with and have massive headphones with my tape cassette thing, thinking nobody could hear me with my headphones on. <laughs> and I, know I used to embarrass her walking around the village because I'd have my headphones singing along to stuff and she'd be like, everyone else out here can hear you. And I'd be like, la la la. <laughs> um, and I did piano as a child. And um, my auntie Hillary was a piano teacher. So she taught me piano. Um, and I remember doing my piano exams, I'd get really nervous and my hands, I'd always have to replay stuff because I'd be so nervous. Then we'd sing the scales and they were like, oh, would you not do singing instead? <laughs> so then I started singing lessons when I was about 12 um, in the National Performing Arts School of Ireland, NPAS. Um, and then I went to another kind of singing teacher called Maureen Ward when I was about, God, I don't know, maybe 15. She was amazing, um, 15 or 16. And she has a group called Talented Kids Ireland. And then she got me into classical singing when I was 18. Before that, I thought I was Christina Aguilera. And I used to only sing Christina Aguilera. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> um, so yeah, she got me into classical singing when I was 18. We just went in for my grade eight. Um, I hadn't done any of the other grades because like university auditions. So I went and did grade eight and then kind of that helped with university auditions because I had to sing obviously a bit of everything. Um, and then I did a music degree. Um, specialising in opera and then at the same time I was doing shows like musical theatre stuff outside so it's kind of always been a bit of a mixture of everything for me going through but yeah it's all really fun. <laughs> I love that I love that it's been a mixture and because it's the exact same for me I grew yeah. up totally riffing along to Christina Aguilera <laughs> I think it was her stripped album was just on repeat all the yeah. basics oh my gosh that album is um, and original genie in a bottle oh, going right yeah. oh my gosh absolutely and you that was like <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely all the big voices all the celine dion's i mean my my mum she was my main inspiration with big voices her voice is huge um yeah. she always sang the real diva songs like she could belt out whitney houston no problem wow. she was properly my idol with stuff like that um, but I really feel that singing all those things, it just gives you a more well-rounded voice that's then able to cope with whatever's thrown at it. Is that how you feel? Yes, at the time I was definitely not using it correctly. And I know my first, I don't even know the name of my first teachers because it was like a stage school, but they definitely, I would say, didn't teach, cause I, I teach singing. They didn't teach me anything about my voice. They, if it was loud, they were like, yeah, that's great. And I'd leave my lesson with no voice being like, oh, well now my throat's really sore. Um, so although it was great for like building your confidence, it was terrible in terms of like teaching me how to sing wrongly or not correcting the things I was doing, which kind of reinforced them. Um, so then when I went to my next teacher, she was great. And then my opera teacher after that basically had to like 
bring me right back because I could sing all the notes, but I was singing them in the, not the best way. And um, so she brought me right back to basics. She was amazing, Virginia Kerr. She's an amazing Irish opera singer. Um, so she brought me right back to basics on that side of things again. And yeah, you just have to kind of rebuild. So I'm really, when I'm teaching now, I'm so like <laughs> on it with everything. Cause I'm like, you can't like ruin your voice. It's, it's just, it's too delicate. And I'm, yeah, that's one thing that really like gets me annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> in life. It because that's the foundations on, upon which you build every other type of voice that you want to be able to sing isn't it if you don't have yeah. those foundations right all of those voices are not going to sit right and you're going to cause damage yeah 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 so I can see why you get so you know ahead of about it. it's important <laughs> so important so yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I'm after growing up singing Christina Aguilera genie in a bottle what was the thing that made you go opera brilliant let's do that <laughs> I honestly had no, but I always thought I was an alto, always. And I always used to sing the lower parts in everything. And it was just this one teacher was like, no, I think you're a soprano. Like, I mean, my speaking voice, if I heard me now, I'd be like, you're definitely a soprano. But um, with that, she was just like, just try this. And she just opened up the whole top of my voice, which I just didn't know I had. And then I think because that was so new to me, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And also that's really loud too. I liked anything big and loud. <laughs> so I was like, great, I can do that loud. Um, and then obviously refined it. Um, but yeah, before that, I kind of didn't know anything about it, didn't really have any interest in it um, until university, I would say. So yeah, and then all of the contemporary classical stuff, like all the Poulonks, um, they were my favorites. <laughs> so yeah. Where did you go to uni? Uh, no, I don't know why I had to think about that. So I went to, I went to Dundalk Institute of Technology for three years and then I went to the National University of Ireland Maynooth for three years no did I do two I did two years because I transferred so it was a three-year degree but I transferred straight into second year oh okay so it was all singing all the way along uh yeah 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 okay and <laughs> it was mainly focusing on opera there was it uh my first one was no my first one was opera traditional Irish music and contemporary and they classed contemporary as anything that wasn't the other two so like pop jazz all that kind of stuff um and then my second university was all classical so yeah sounds like this set you up perfectly for when Ida came along because you guys did yeah. everything and it's amazing yeah. like, <laughs> it sounds like it's like the universe knew that Ida was in your path and so it was like yeah. right we're preparing this girl we're gonna get her to sing everything <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so how did that opportunity come about with Ida well, I was in a group before Ida called Voce, which is similar, um, except there was four of us, four girls, um, except everyone would sing a part. So I was soprano one. Um, so I would kind of just sing the classical stuff and the odd time singing some of the poppy stuff, um, which I met loads of people through. And then I got a message, somebody I know that knows Georgie, I still don't know who, got in contact with Georgie about me and Georgie sent me a message um asking me did I want to audition and I feel like that was before Christmas and I think I was doing panto or something so I couldn't then after Christmas they still hadn't found someone so then I contacted her again and I went over to Georgie's kitchen <laughs> and I auditioned and sang through some stuff and then we just had loads of girly chats which was the best bit and they gave me loads of life advice because I, I was going through a kind of breakup at the time so they were giving me all like strangers giving me life advice <laughs> and yeah then auditioned and they let me in and then kind of went from there so yeah wow how nice that you were automatically welcomed into Georgie's kitchen I know and it's so perfect because it was just off Oxford Circus so I was like this is great I'm like come back from Jersey <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah she's in Jersey now isn't she yes so I'm like yeah. I want to come and visit because it's just the weather especially if it's nice there is amazing so I'm like let us come <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, it just goes to show the openness of the girls in Ida, doesn't it? That you're just meeting for the first time, you're going to audition and you're invited straight into a kitchen and she's giving you life advice. I mean, doesn't that just go to show how open and wonderful these girls are? But they're, they're just like, I'm so lucky because it's like I got to be in this great group, sing all this great stuff, but also got three amazing friends out of it. Well, four now, because when I joined, we had Laura and then Jasmine replaced Laura. So four, four great friends out of it. <laughs> Yeah. That's amazing. And um, with Ida, what what like line do you tend to sing? I think you guys do swap and change quite a bit, don't yeah, you? A bit of everything. Um, if it's loud and high, usually it's me. 
or if it's loud and like or not loud if it's high and like fast it's georgie and um, if it's big and belty it's wendy and then i'll kind of do the mixy belt with wendy and then jasmine kind of does a bit of everything so yeah we're kind of we all sing everything basically yeah, I but, yeah if it's poppy end it's usually me and wendy that kind of will mix into that side but yeah yeah after doing so much singing though and like touching on so many different genres do you do you think you have a favorite is there like one or two songs you do with Ida where you're like yeah I really like this one this really speaks to me my favorite is oh me oh see you again that's been my favorite since day one um I just love it so much like so so much I don't even know what it is about I think it's just the combination of the songs work so nicely and they're both gorgeous songs that's my yeah that would be my favorite and I love our never enough <gasps> um, Yes. Yeah. I love that too. I love your version of that. <laughs> love it. I'd like to do that in every set. <laughs> yeah. So I know that obviously within Ida you get to sing so many different things, but as a solo artist, can you tell us more about what you've done as a soloist? You said about taking part in pantos, but I'm sure there's lots of other things you can tell us. Yeah, so panto wise, I've been doing them over here obviously last Christmas. I didn't see her before that I was in. Plymouth with Brian Connolly doing Cinderella. Um, the year before that, I don't remember where I was, but I'm somewhere else every year. Um, with, and that was with Qdos Pantos, which are now called Crossroads Pantomime Company. Um, and they're amazing. They're like the biggest panto company in the UK. So they're just amazing to work for. And I've made so many amazing friends. Here. That's, that's great. Um, before that, I was doing, I did two contracts on Seaborn um, as cast. And obviously I did the Botchay stuff after that. Um, I did Thirstford back in 2011. Um, I did a US tour of Women of Ireland in 2015. Oh, I don't even know what I, I can't remember what I've done, to be honest. And then I do, I do a lot of jazz gigs um, here in London. Um, and I do some traditional Irish. I've got a single coming out. We're going to probably release the end of this month, actually. Well, it's not August yet, but it's August. So the end of August, I'm probably going to get that released, um, which I've been working on with an Irish producer called Ewan, who's amazing. And um, so we're just kind of finishing up stuff with that at the moment. Wow, um, tell us more about that. That sounds really exciting. Is it an original well, piece? Is it a cover? What, like, what is it? It's a cover of this gorgeous, so it's a Northern singer, um, Northern English singer, um, but her songs sound really Celtic. So Kate Rusby, her songs sound really Celtic and Ewan kind of introduced me to them. It's kind of folky. And I was like, I love this, it's amazing. So he, has kind of gone away, produced the track, come back to me, and then we've just kind of been working on that um, for the last while. So yeah, that's kind of the next, I think the next thing that's happening. So we're hoping the end of August, maybe beginning of September, um, to kind of put that out into the world. Um, but yeah, I can't, I'm like, I need to get my CV up to know what I've done. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but kind of basically a mixture of everything. It's always, always a mixture of everything yeah oh my gosh like no wonder you can't remember everything that you've done there's just too many things to keep in your head there there's <laughs> so busy all the time and now like releasing a single which is really exciting um, i can't wait to hear that i'll tell you what you'll have to send us links we'll have to try and put it in well. uh, in the description so if this this podcast will go out before it's released so uh, we'll just have to make sure we've got all of your social media links so that people can keep yep. up with you um in the description so <laughs> They can then know about it first <laughs> to yeah. make, sure that we, make sure we're on track with it. Um, yeah. yeah, you mentioned Thursford, and um, I was talking to Carrie Ann, a wonderful singer. And oh, Carrie Ann was my year of Thursford. Hey! She was one of my best friends when I did it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was <laughs> her first year. Of that was my first year of it as well. So we were like, because <laughs> we were both swings. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> swing, oh gosh, a swinging part is. Oh, well, my thing was. And I will put this out here. I am not a dancer. I am a mover. <laughs> and I went to the dance call and it wasn't a hard dance, but I was definitely not good at it. And I then got cast as a swing and all the swings got called over on the first day of rehearsals and were told we were cast as swings because we were so strong in the dance call. And I was like, oh my God, they've picked the wrong person. They've got me confused with someone else. <laughs> but because um, Carrie Ann is very much a dancer. Like she's, she's just amazing at everything. Um, and I kind of had a heart attack the first few times because with the swing track, you're on every day as a different person. So you'll be doing the same moves, but maybe going in the opposite direction or like, so I just, I spent my life making maps of the stage and like who I was and where I was going. 
but it was actually fine. So, but Carrie Ann helped me a lot. Well, I just, gosh, it sounds so scary. I feel like we should just explain very clearly what swing is for people who are listening and haven't heard that term before. Will you explain it for us? Yes. So a swing is someone who has to learn a lot of different tracks and will go, I don't know what the best way of explaining this is, will kind of do every show playing a different part. So you're learning, I think I had to learn six tracks, six or seven tracks, I can't remember. Um, and so say one day I would be, let's say Carrie Ann, I wouldn't be Carrie Ann, but I'd be Carrie Ann. And the next day I would be Lisa. And the next day I would be Jane. Um, so yeah, so basically you would cover their day off or if someone was sick, you would be them. Yeah, so, yeah. so on that day, you could be playing any one of six or seven roles. And you just have to turn it on and go, right, great. I know exactly what I'm doing. Or look at your map before every song and be like, okay, where am I going? <laughs> that's what I used to do. <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. That would be me as well. Yeah. That's me. Every Ida show, the girls, I just don't remember stuff like that. The girls are like pushing me. They're like, it's this way next. And I'm like, what song is this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I've not improved. I think age is making it worse. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I love your choreographed routines in Ida though, because the great thing about classical music is it's got so much impact and drama and grandeur as it is, that you don't actually need too much sort of jazzy dance moves or anything. God, I know, thank God. <laughs> like an arm and that's it. <laughs> the thing is, simple choreography like that is sometimes all you need and it makes a massive difference on the stage, doesn't it? I mean, I think it would look really weird if we were singing like Toreador with like crazy choreography. So I'm very grateful that it's that genre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. <laughs> I think a really good example of that actually that uh, really proved it to me was I was watching Cardiff Singer of the World one year. Mm -hmm. Honestly, when that's on my diary, is it's clear for that. I'm, I'm watching that. <laughs> um, and there was a Mongolian tenor who yes. sang the most incredible piece and he'd stayed so still throughout the whole piece. And then right at the end, when it was reaching this big, massive note, he opened his arms up to the audience and to the crowd. And it felt like this momentous thing that he'd done, inviting everybody right in to him as he was singing this such emotional song. And instantly you felt like you were welcomed into his world, like right into his emotion of that song. And it's just such a simple movement, but it made a massive difference. You were like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. It just goes it really, to show how simple moves can really mean a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's all with the sincerity of it because the one thing I oh I just I hate the dead behind the eyes things that you you sometimes see. I notice it a lot more um it's just if you can notice if people are nervous, I guess. Um but you're like, no, just <laughs> pretend. <laughs> and I'm sure I do it myself, I'm sure. Um, but I think yeah, those kind of things it just, I think it opens, well, first of all, great for the ribcage, um, but it gives an air of confidence, even if you weren't feeling confident that day, it just kind of, you'll feel it by kind of creating that posture as well. So it kind of works twofold, it's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I really feel like when I open my arms up to the audience, because you are, that's why I like having my microphone on a stand more often mm -hmm. than not, is because that if I'm holding the microphone, I've got a barrier there to the audience yeah. um so when the microphone's on a stand and I can have my hands clear like first of all when I years ago now when I first started performing with the mic on a stand um I didn't know what to do with my hands for a bit you knew as a performer you're always like what am I doing with my hands no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but when I got used to it having the microphone on a stand and being able to open up completely to the audience and not having any kind of barrier there when you're holding a microphone it just mm -hmm. it felt like I was able to invite them in to the performance with me in a more intimate way and I, I love doing it in never enough talking about never enough um take my hand will you share this with me and you're inviting them in and lifting your arms wide open as if you're about to give them a hug <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah simple word painting like that in classical music when you're singing the, the songs with such drama and grandeur as it is that just that's all you need and yeah. you know less is more in that case isn't it it just really works yeah 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 although you look like more of a dancer to be honest you've got the oh. 
No, my problem is, and this is always my, I, I did Irish dancing for years back in Ireland when I was a kid. So I can point my toe really, really well. That's it though. So, you and arms, your, toes, dance, your, your arms are like here. When I first moved to England and I had to go to dance calls for like musical auditions and stuff. I was like, I don't know how to move my arms. I don't know how to move my legs. <laughs> My agent sent me to so many classes just to be like, you need to like use this part of your body as well. <laughs> it's like, oh. But the problem now I have is because my point is so good, my toe point, people presume I'm a dancer because I can do that. But then they're like, they see the rest and they're like, oh no. <laughs> I'm like, I can do it if I have time. But if it's like a dance call, oh God, no. Really? No, no. I was presuming it, looking at you there looking at just your chest upwards on a computer screen i think it's because you i can see the definition in your arms so if you're not using them for dancing you must be doing some other workouts or something well <laughs> over lockdown i stopped for a while but um i go to i do a lot of pilates um and i went back to body pump was that yesterday it was the day before yesterday after not going for about three months and my body is so sore like yeah. so, so sore and I didn't even use a heavy weight so if anyone has not done body pump it's a bar like a barbell and you just everything is on the bar but you don't use a big weight you just you have to do a lot of reps and I used like the lightest weight of everyone in the class <laughs> and I still the next day I'm stretched and I did yoga yesterday as well thinking it would make everything better no so today I'm still very sore <laughs> but I've been trying to exercise yeah your muscles are very good at reminding you that you haven't done something for a while aren't they yeah yeah and I used to be, it used to be funny with Ida because when we'd go on a cruise or something the girls would always go to the gym every day and I was the one that was like oh, I'm not going to the gym like no no it's like I'm gonna sit here and just sit here <laughs> and now I'm like who am I I'm like going to the gym and going to class now I say I go to the gym I don't go to the gym I only go to the classes because I don't have the willpower to do it on my own but um yes yeah, so I'm like the next cruise we eventually go on I might actually go to the gym it's very exciting <laughs> life has changed oh yeah the next <laughs> cruise we eventually go on goodness me because you and Ida you used to fly all over the place doing cruises all the time didn't you yeah and I'm really lucky because as well I did the cruises um before when I was cast I've been so many I was talking about this with someone today I've been so many places pre-pandemic like I say in the last 10 years that I'm so lucky and I feel like I'm so lucky that I'm this age when this has happened because I've had time to do all the traveling before it's kind of gotten crazy. Um, I don't have loads of like commitments at the moment that I can't like kind of, I'm not like, I don't wanna say stuck, stuck is not the right word, but like I'm still free to kind of go wherever and do whatever when eventually we can. Um, yeah, it's just, I think it's a really lucky age to be at while this craziness is going on in the world because we had experiences and we, yeah I do feel really sorry for like kids and stuff with all this stuff going on so I, I know what you're saying but like because you used to perform so much in, like all over the world as well as here in the UK and in Ireland what have you been doing to pivot throughout the lockdowns and everything when we weren't able to do that um my teaching I teach in two secondary schools and two universities so that I've had that ongoing through the whole time so I've been really lucky actually that all my work wasn't cancelled it was for like the beginning when they weren't sure what was happening but the rest of the time I've had that both on zoom and in person um and performing wise I did some of the online concerts um and they were quite fun although I don't I just I hate setting up all the stuff and I'm not very good at technology <laughs> and I used to get angry with all the wires <laughs> so we did a bit of that um and then I was doing quite a few projects I was kind of working on more projects on the side as opposed to like presenting like video stuff and the girls did a lot more concerts than I did but I was I don't know I just didn't enjoy it as much so if it was an Ida thing I was like great I'll do that but if it was just like a Sarah thing I was like oh I, I don't really want to do that I'd rather like work on something and then do it that way because it was more honestly the wires <laughs> I, like, I can't deal with this and obviously living in London in a house share you don't want to really annoy your housemates either so it was just kind of finding the balance yeah I completely understand that completely especially people who have been listening to me for a while now they'll know that technology goodness me I try but like, I'd love to be technology's best friend but it just does not want to know <laughs> so I understand what you're saying there um and the concerts that I've done instead of take like being able to pre-record them and like so many people have got such jazzy equipment that they're able to understand and use um 
there's something so wonderful about just doing the Facebook live concert where you just oh yeah, yeah. and this is yeah, I the concerts I enjoyed and actually the ones that I didn't mind doing, I didn't mind doing any of them, but the ones I enjoyed doing were the live streams. It was when I had to pre record because I think as well when you pre record, you're really pernickety with yourself about well that I can do that better and la la la. Whereas when it's live, you just do it. It's way more fun. You're actually kind of interacting with people at the same time. And I was like, This is much more fun rather than just singing to myself. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree yeah. because well, it's the interaction, really. That's what I love about performing anyway, is having that connection with an audience. And so yeah. being able to do that on a live concert over Facebook Live and still feeling like you've got that connection there. That's what I loved about it as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Nice to have. Well, um, <laughs> I've got some questions for you from members of the Mary Jess Club. So for those who don't know, I started up a Patreon style monthly subscription club called the Mary Jess Club. And now Mary Jess Club members get to submit questions to ask my fabulous guests <laughs> um, in advance of the podcast recordings. So I do have a few questions for you from club members if you're happy for us to fire away yes. the questions. Okay. okay. So do you have an absolute favorite genre of music? I'm guessing this person knows that you sing lots and lots of different things. Yeah. They're asking you for a choice. I don't think I do, you know. No? I find, mm -mm, no, I do. I find if I sing one thing for a long time, I get really bored. And that's why I, I love my job because I'm, I just sing, oh, anything that's, I get to like sing, sing. So whether it's, like a big opera number or like a big belty musical theater or a big pop song anything big <laughs> we'll go with that because i can't i just can't i cannot choose if i had to sing one star for the rest of my life i think i wouldn't cope so <laughs> yeah can't choose <laughs> i think you said that i feel like we've got so much in common with that answer because i feel the same way especially the go big or go home i mean i grew up listening to 80s rock music where it was big hair big key changes big guitar yeah. solos, big everything and yeah. i Linking, love it. So I'm like, I want all the Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. so yeah, I completely relate to everything you just said there. Um, okay, and, and the next question is, what type of activities does she like to do in her free time? Um, well, over lockdown, I made friends with the squirrels and I used to feed them at my kitchen window. Anyone that's seen any of my Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of squirrels because they come to the kitchen window and I feed them monkey nuts. But new squirrels have now moved in and they're a little bit nervous still. So what I now do is I go to the park up the road where all the squirrels kind of know me by now <laughs> and I feed them. So that's one of my activities. Um, and then yeah, my Pilates, my yoga. Um, I can't have a dog where I live. So I use an app called Borrow My Doggy and I borrow people's doggies and take them for walks. Um, and then, to be honest, I don't have a lot of free time, so <laughs> that's probably all I really kind of, and catch up with friends, and yeah. I'm not surprised you don't have a lot of free time, I mean, that's a lot of teaching you're doing, and you've yeah. got what singing, and you're releasing a single, my goodness gracious me. <laughs> it's all good stuff, I like being busy, so I'm like very grateful for it all, so yeah. It's amazing what you're doing, and actually the next question was, what have you got coming up next for your solo career, so that is the single. Yes, um, that is coming up. And then I'm working on a few, I don't even know what you'd call the genre. I'm working on a few different things with a few different producers um, here in London as well that are kind of, I would say experimental. I don't know, it's like electronic experimental. I don't know, and we're not sure if we're even gonna do anything with it, but we've been doing quite a lot of stuff with that as well um, over the last couple of months. So, kind of just playing I think that's the really good thing about this time we've had time to play with stuff that you wouldn't otherwise kind of know about or like think I don't know so yeah so we might do something with that kind of stuff um oh my gosh I hope you do I want to hear it <laughs> I want to hear it <laughs> the boys played me some stuff they came up with these two producers and I was like this is really cool make me something like this so yeah we will see what happens with that and then I've been in me and two of my friends have put together a little jazz trio and we're just working on that so we filmed a promo for that um whoa you know so trio is in all singers or instrumentalists as well um, me singing double bass piano we've got an option with um drums as well whoa. um yeah we did the promo for that so we'll be getting all that sorted in the next few weeks and then kind of putting that out there as well so yeah it's kind of just 
fun little projects, I think, to keep us busy. So, yeah. Yeah, fun. Have you got a name for your jazz trio? Like, are we able to find that anywhere when it's well, Not yet. We did have a name and then we were like, we're going to change this. So when we come up with a new name, <laughs> I will tell you. Yeah, you have to let us know. That would be yeah. amazing. Oh my gosh, yeah. you've got so many things coming up in the pipeline there. That's really yeah. exciting. And the electronics. Exciting. How did you then yeah. meet in these producers, like mainly being in the classical crossover sphere? Like, how did you then get to know? Um, them? Well, I'm I'm a funny one. Like, I'm, I would say of Ida, I'm probably the least in the classical crossover world. Like, yeah. my group of people around me are very different. So I'm kind of, so musician wise, yeah. Like, there's like the poppy musician friends. There's the like writer musician friends, the producer. So everyone's kind of, I think just through what I've done every I've crossed paths with kind of less classical crossover and more everything else. Um, so through this one was through, I am an still teacher. So the guy that I'm studying my EMT with, so it's a still master trainer. Um, he writes and produces with these two guys and he introduced me to them because they needed backing vocals on something. And then through the backing vocals, they then started making me some stuff um because they were like this will suit your voice and you'll do this and this and this so kind of kind of through that windy <laughs> roundabout way but yeah that's great and um, i studied a still as well that is one of my favorite vocal techniques to study but um for people who are not au fait with a still and vocal techniques and all that kind of thing can you just explain for the listeners what a still is so the still model is based around anatomy and physiology and how to isolate kind of different parts of the voice to create any sound. So it's it's just such a useful teaching tool. And as a singer, it's amazing because you can, I always think it's like math. So you're like, if I do this and this, I get this sound. And it's training the muscles to get to the point where you can be like, okay, if I just move this bit, I move this bit, it will sound like this. And it kind of takes a bit of the stress away from everything because you just know I do this and this and it's going to work. So yeah, I'm obsessed with it. I think it's amazing. And it's just so useful for teaching, especially. So yeah, so we've just done our exams for our a still master trainer um, a couple of weeks ago. So now we're on to phase two. Oh so my that's, gosh, that's so exciting. <laughs> and yeah, I completely agree with you with what you said about the still technique. I kind of feel like it gives me a tool belt where it yeah. goes, we need to achieve this. And I go, right, what are the tools in my belt? Okay, I can move this to there and it'll achieve that. Yeah. And I, I love that about it because there's, I always felt before I discovered the still technique, I always felt like it was so great for pianists or guitarists or violinists where they could see their instrument. They knew what it looked like and they knew exactly where to place the, blur, the bow in order to get whatever sound they wanted. I can't see that with my voice. So then being able to be taught about my voice in a really biological and mechanical way, I was able to understand it as if somebody who could see their instrument can understand their instrument. And it yeah. really felt like it opened up the doors for yeah. more tools in my tool belt, for more understanding, to actually understand my voice far more and be able to look after it more as well. Yes, definitely, the vocal care side of it. Also, I think because you get, I don't wanna say you get more feeling, but you get more of a sense of where things are. And obviously everyone's voice is different and it's gonna feel different for everyone else and effort levels and things. Something I might find really easy, someone else will find really hard and vice versa. Um, because of the way you speak and your accent and everything's gonna affect it. Um, but I just think it's so useful in terms of, you can say, you can like make this noise. And by making this noise, it's gonna activate certain muscles. And you continue to do that to build the muscle, just like I cannot do the splits. But I know if every day I did the stretches, eventually I could do them. It's the same kind of thing. Um, just repetition practice. And yeah, it's. I wish I had come across it sooner. Like I wish, I wish, I wish. And I, I find it crazy now when I think about it. There's so many singers and so many teachers that are teaching. And there's some great teachers that don't know about the anatomy and they're still great teachers. But it's crazy that we have an instrument that we don't know the parts of. And obviously there's still parts of the voice that we still don't know how it works and we still don't know like there's so much we don't know still and the research is ongoing and that's what makes it so exciting so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love it as well it is so exciting i i mean i know it sounds like a horrible procedure so if you're squeamish i'm sorry um <laughs> people listening but sometimes i'd really love to have the camera down your throat thing just so i could see what my instrument looks like i'd yeah. love to be able to see that yeah everybody yeah. else gets to see their instruments it's not I 
I know. I've been I've been talking about this for ages. I'm like, I really want to make an appointment just to have like a scope, but it's really hard to get an appointment if you don't have anything wrong. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm on a mission to get one, even if I have to pay a fortune. I'm like, I just really want to see what I'm working with because I know I have a very big larynx comparative to my size. <laughs> so, which I think is why, like the big loud stuff, my larynx is not like it's not a lot of effort for me because the actual size of my larynx is quite big um but i really want to see see the inner workings there's an amazing video i recommend everyone look at if you're not squeamish called what does a burp look like and it's a vocal coach who was having a scope and she just happened to burp at the same time which they never catch that on camera and it's amazing i make all my students look at it because i'm like you can see how close everything is <laughs> but yeah it's like a little alien opening its mouth when you see um the esophagus open <laughs> but i highly recommend it <laughs> Oh my gosh, just out of morbid curiosity, I think I want to look at that as well, because it's not every day that you go, I'm going to go on the internet and watch somebody burp. Yeah, that's my life. I've got an app on my phone, a vocal folds app, so I can show people at any time. <laughs> I am like a geek when it comes to this stuff, so yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great that you have that. I have that in um, grandma form, um, in that I have a book, <laughs> so like when I've taught students in the past, um, I get the book out and go, look, this is what it looks like. Because yeah. I do feel like it's just so important to know what, what you're working with, and what your instrument looks like. So I completely appreciate the fact that you've got an app on your phone to show people. Oh, I, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, here's an app, here is a burp. What else do you need? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> That's completely brilliant. So what have you got left in terms of your tuition there? Um, so now teaching observations. So I, I'm going to be observed for the next year teaching um, different figures and qualities from the Estill method. Um, so yeah, that's it. Oh my which gosh. Is great. So all the hard, the hard part is done. The written paper is done. The voice print is done. Demonstrations are done. So yeah. That is really exciting. Really fun bit. So, wow. Yeah. And just at the right time as well, now that we're opening up again, hopefully the, they can go ahead without too many cancellations because of COVID and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the really good thing with the still over the last year actually is they've moved everything online kind of seamlessly and the really i well what i found with teaching i don't know if you're the same is zoom obviously is not ideal but it's so useful because you actually get a closer view of what people are doing in terms of like tongue jaw actually the like so if i siren you'll see like it's just mm, mm, they can see without if you're in a room behind a piano they're not going to see all these things as clearly so i've actually found it great and for like tuition that we've had on zoom fab so cannot complain unless the internet goes down <laughs> yeah I didn't see anything too tempting for the technology yeah. you know what it's like with us <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well um i know that you don't have too much time to spend with us today so i'm so grateful that you've spent this time with us um i really want to be able to look out for all of these amazing things that you're doing so where is the best place to follow you to get um, well Facebook I don't use that often because I'm just not good at social media so you're probably best off Instagram um which I am at Svog so S Vog beginning of my name I should come up with a, my actual name but I never did so S B A U G um on on Twitter again I'm not the best at social media but every now and again I'll retweet Ida um I think I'm Sarah or you guys say ah oh, Vaughn so or for Rachel <laughs> but yeah <laughs> okay, well, we'll make sure we put those links in the description below um so I'm guessing Instagram is probably going to be the best place for probably Instagram yeah I'm I'm kind of terrible at social media so it's mainly photos of a nice beach or a squirrel but yeah I'll put some stuff about the single when it comes out well, who doesn't want to see a beach and a cute squirrel oh I know <laughs> my priorities <laughs> I mean, if you didn't already look like a Disney princess, that is cementing your position. <laughs> really, isn't it? <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah, they're so cute. Well, that's completely brilliant. Um, and I'm so grateful that you were happy to answer all of my questions and all of the questions from the Mary Jess Club as well. If you would like to have the opportunity to ask my future guests 
your questions before the podcast is recorded, then look in the description below for information as to how to join the Mary Jess Club. And Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. I'm so grateful that you were able to squeeze us in to your super busy schedule. So thank you so, so much for joining us on the Mary Jess Meets podcast. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.